Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain line coding with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I'll discuss about basics of line coding. After that, I will explain characteristics of line coding. And at last, I'll discuss about importance of line coding. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of line coding. First of all, you need to understand what is line coding. See, line coding is a process to convert digital data into digital signal. So here we will be converting ones and zeros into waveform, right? So line coding is a process of converting digital data into digital signal. Here we will convert ones and zeros into waveform so that given digital signal can be transmitted effectively over communication channel. This communication channel can be wired communication channel, it could be optical fiber communication channel or it could be radio link. Radio link means wireless communication channel. Right. Now let me explain purpose of line coding. See here we will be converting digital data into digital signal. So signal can be transmitted effectively over the communication channel. That is first purpose. Second purpose is the signal can be properly synchronized at the receiver side. And third purpose is the signal can be accurately recovered at the receiver side. So here what we do is we convert digital data into digital signal. So we will be having a waveform that we will be transmitting over the channel. So the basic purpose is signal should be transmitted effectively and efficiently on the communication channel. At receiver side, there should be proper synchronization and receiver should be able to extract signal accurately. Right. So that is the basic purpose. Now let me take one example. See here in example, what I'll do is I'll take digital data that is 10101 and using line coding let me represent this digital data in form of waveform so here what i have done is i have represented logic 1 with plus a amplitude and logic 0 with minus a amplitude so that is how one can convert digital data into waveforms right there are many line coding techniques here I have just given one example of it, right? Now, let me discuss about characteristics of line coding. See, in this video, I will discuss about four major characteristics of line coding. First characteristic is signal level and data level. Second is pulse rate and beat rate. Third is DC components. And fourth is self-synchronization. So first of all, I'll discuss about signal level and data level. See, when it comes to data level, one should know data level refers to the number of symbols in original data. Typically for binary signal, we have logic 0 and logic 1. If you have binary data like 1010, then one can say we have two data levels. First level is logic 0 and second level is logic 1, right? But when it comes to signal level, that refers to the number of distinct voltage levels used in line coded signal. See in data level, we are talking about digital data. Usually we talk about binary data. So with binary data, we have two levels with data level. But signal level that is there with respect to line coded signal. So you need to observe which category of line coding is given to us. Let me take one example. Here, if you talk about unipolar coding scheme, then in unipolar, for logic 1, we have plus V voltage and for logic 0, we have 0 voltage. So here we have one signal level. If you talk about polar signal, then in polar signal, we have plus V and minus V voltage means here we have two signal levels. If you talk about bipolar signal, then in that 
V have plus V, zero and minus V voltage means we have three voltage levels. In multi-level, we have more than three levels, right? Now, let me discuss about second characteristics that is pulse rate and data rate. See, data rate is total bits per second and pulse rate is total pulse per second. So, if you want to analyze data rate and pulse rate relatively, then one should know with given pulse, how many bits are there? If you have n number of bits per pulse, then pulse rate will be bit rate divided by n. Here n is number of bits per pulse, right? So, data rate is total bits per second and pulse rate is total pulse per second. If you have n number of bits per pulse, then pulse rate will be bit rate divided by n, right? Now, let me discuss about next characteristics that is DC component. See, DC component is an average voltage of transmitted signal. Ideally, average voltage of transmitted signal should be zero. Means, with given transmitted signal, we don't have any DC content. Let me tell you why. If you talk about a signal which is having DC component, then it cannot pass through transformer or AC coupled circuit. As well as DC component may cause baseline vendor. Let me explain what is the meaning of it. See, if you have a signal which is having consecutive zeros or consecutive ones, due to baseline vendor, there will be slow drift with given signal that may cause error, right? So, if you have DC component, means it will be difficult to identify consecutive ones and consecutive zeros due to which there can be slow drift with given signal which may cause error of synchronization, right? So, DC component that should be ideally zero, right? Let me take few examples. If you talk about unipolar signaling, then that is having high DC component. Why? The reason is with unipolar for logic 1, we transmit plus V voltage and for logic 0, we transmit 0 voltage. If you talk about polar signal, then that is having low DC component that one can say or 0 DC component. See, with polar, there are multiple schemes. But if you say with logic 1, we are transmitting plus V voltage and with logic 0, we are transmitting minus V voltage. And if you have more number of ones, then there is a possibility of low DC component, right? If you talk about Manchester coding scheme, then that is having zero DC component. So one can say Manchester is having better quality in terms of DC component, right? Now let me discuss about synchronization. See, synchronization ensures that the receiver knows exactly when one bit ends and the next bit begins. Synchronization has two essential parameters. One is clock frequency and second is clock phase, right? Synchronization is very essential. If you don't have proper synchronization at receiver side, then receiver may misread bits, especially if the signal is having long runs of identical bits, right? So if we have identical bits at transmitter side, at that time, there has to have synchronization, otherwise there is a possibility of misread of bits, right? Here, if you talk about comparison of different schemes, then for NRZ, synchronization is poor. Why? The reason is, in NRZ, we will be transmitting plus V voltage for logic 1 and 0 voltage for logic 0. So, if you have long sequence of 1s and zeros then there is no voltage transition means at receiver side we can have issues of misread of bits. The reason is if you have sequence of ones then it is bit difficult to identify clock, right? Second scheme is RZ means return to zero. Here we have better synchronization. The reason is signal returns to zero every bit. And third one is Manchester 
that is having excellent synchronization the reason is there is always transition in the middle of every bits right now let me discuss about importance of line coding line coding is used to convert digital data into digital signals by having suitable digital signals one can ensure reliable data transmission line coding improves synchronization in digital signal if we have transitions then at receiver side one can have proper synchronization line coding reduces errors if you have such waveforms which are less sensitive to noise and distortion then at receiver side we will be having minimum errors line coding also helps in bandwidth if you use digital signal properly then one can minimize the bandwidth of the signal by which we can have efficient data transmission line coding also eliminates dc component like if you use manchester encoding then in that we have zero dc component if you have zero dc component then one can avoid issues of signal regarding transformer coupling right line coding also supports error detection in some line coding schemes one can also detect error so this is all about line coding now in next video i'll explain you different categories of line coding by waveforms that will give you more clarity about how exactly we convert digital data into digital signal in terms of waveforms i hope you have enjoyed this video still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video